Hi, my name is Chris Bloom, and I'm a senior architect in the storage BU. Today, I'm going to talk about using local disk on VMware with OCS4. On VMware, we have multiple choices of using local disks. Um, for one, we can use regular VMDKs, which are VM disks that are directly attached to VMs. Um, they can be based on pretty much anything. Then we have the choice of using RDM or raw device mapping, which maps um, certain RAID devices directly into a VM. And we can also use VM direct path IO, uh, which can map device, local devices to uh, directly to VMs. And this is actually what we're going to look at today. So we will try to map local NVMe devices into a VM. And this is probably one of the um, hardest steps that will involve uh, many things to do. If you just want to use VMDKs, then you just um, do not do the first couple of steps in the beginning. So there are some requirements that you need to satisfy to do that. You uh, install the OCS4 operator, you install a local storage operator. Um, you need to have local disks of some kind on at least three hypervisors. Like I said, we will be using local NVMe devices for the virtual direct path IO. And um, you also need the ability to create three 10 gig VMDKs on the same hypervisors that you dedicate for OCS um, for the Ceph monitors. So how do you set up the local disk as PVs? You assign the OCS label to the nodes with the local storage. You install the local storage operator in its namespace. You, um, you can use the daemon set to figure out the disk IDs for the local disk and the VMDKs. Um, either, yeah, by using a daemon set that's provided at this link here, um, or uh, you can do that yourself either by SSHing into the host or using OCD back node. Um, and then you create two local volumes in the local storage operators namespace, one with the volume mode file system for the set monitors and one with the volume mode block for the local disk. <clears throat> and finally, to use these local disk PVs with OCS, you create a storage cluster. So this is the full YAML that you need to create. I've split it up into two sections. So um, basically, you put in here the storage class name for your um, local PVs with a file system mode. And over here, you put your storage class name for the PVs with the volume mode block. And that's basically it. So now let's uh, look at how this actually works with a little demo. So um, first, I have prepared this OpenShift cluster here. It's freshly installed with OC, uh, OpenShift 435 on VMware. And um, this is the VMware cluster. So we are on per seven. These are all the nodes that uh, make up the cluster. We have three masters and six compute nodes. So we will be using the first three compute nodes uh, today to attach the local disk, um, especially the VMDKs, uh, especially the VM direct pass IO. We need to shut down these workers because I know that nothing is working on the cluster. I can just um, tell them to shut down. Um, if you would be doing this on a running cluster, then obviously you first drain those nodes um, and ensure that the pods are properly uh, migrated off of these nodes before shutting them down. So when they're shut down, we ensure that these are running on the three hypervisors. So you see compute node zero is running on host um, RI per three. So I wanna ensure that they, they are all running on different hypervisors. 
So you see that compute one is running on two, compute two is running on three. So I'm going to move compute zero over to um, the first hypervisor. Each of these hypervisors have one NVMe disk that I'm going to attach. And um, now they should all be on different hypervisors. So this is fine now. All right, so let's attach our local NVMe. For this, I'm going to add an NVMe controller and then I'm going to add a PCI device. And you see over here, this is my PCI device and I need to reserve all memory um, for VMware to forward that uh, PCI device. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to add um, the 10 gigabyte VMDK for the SAF monitor. Let's do that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other two workers. Also um, note that when you're attaching a PCI device that's a pass-through PCI device, then um, obviously there are some limitations on that VM. So not only do we reserve all memory and hard allocate that to the VM, but you can also not suspend migrate with remotion or take a snapshot of that virtual machine. Um, but that shouldn't be too bad for you. All right, now that we're done this, um, we power them back on. and they should eventually um, be red again in the cluster. Um, you can either monitor their state in the web UI, or you can do that from the terminal when you're logged in. If you don't see that your um, NVMe PCI devices in the VM options, then you probably haven't configured them for forwarding. To forward them, they need to be configure for pass through. So um, you do that when you select one of your hypervisors, you go to configure under hardware PCI devices, your NVMe device needs to be listed here as pass through enabled device. You can configure PCI devices for pass through by clicking this button up here and then selecting your NVMe device like this. Do note that um, when you have your NVMe configured for pass-through, it cannot serve as a data store anymore. So it's, it's going to be dedicated just for that single use case. So let's hop over to the terminal briefly. So I'm already logged into the cluster so I can list the nodes and we can see that um, the workers are already back online and ready for new workloads. And for this demo, we have um, four files. So first uh, let's look at the requirements. 
Um, we first create uh, namespaces for the two operators that we're going to install. And um, then we are all actually going to install them. So let's do that. So obviously the OpenShift storage namespace is for the OCS operator and the local storage namespace is for the local storage operator. And then we label the OpenShift storage namespace for monitoring so that Prometheus knows it should be monitoring. Let's hop back over to our web UI. Over here, we go to operators, operator hub. We go to storage. We select the container storage, install that. We install it to our OpenShift storage namespace and we leave automatic. And then we go, while this is installing in the background, we can go back to operator hub. We go to storage and now install the local storage operator. And this will take a second. All right, and now that this um, is installed, we can go back to our terminal. And in here, we do have two files, the local file and the local block YAML. And we uh, need to feed it. Um, the device path and as a best practice we're using the by id device path because uh, the disk ids could change between reboots um, and so that we can easily find out the disk ids and all the nodes uh, we can use the daemon set so to do that we first need to label our nodes so we get the node names and we want to, we know that the first three working nodes have the local disk. So we will just do OC label node compute zero. And then the OCS label. And we do that for the first three workers. This is important so that the daemon set knows onto which nodes to look for local disk. Now that we have that, we can um, verify that the lab label was successfully applied by um, just asking for the nodes with the labels. So we see the first workers have the label. This is fine. So now we deploy the daemon set. Um, the daemon set looks like this. Looks like this um, and you see it's nothing too fancy it's just running some bash to uh, figure out the disk by IDs. going back to the terminal let's apply this The link to the daemon set uh, YAML is in the presentation slides. So let's check out the parts and we see immediately that parts spin, spin up on those nodes. Um, since we have three workers with the label, we have um, eventually three, uh, three of those daemon set parts. And the running now, this is fine. So now we can go and gather the log output of those parts. 
And this looks like this. So we have three workers, compute one, compute zero, compute two, and they each have three disks. So I know that SDA is my root disk, so I'm not gonna use that. SDB is the VMDK disk, and NVMe zero and one is the NVMe disk. And they are fortunately named the same on each node. So what I can do is, I can now use these disk IDs in my files. So let's do that. Uh, I'm just going to copy all this output and then we're using Vim to go to the local file. I delete this and then I just paste here. And I can basically remove all the lines that I don't need. So this is for the VMDK. case. So I'm just going to remove the SDA and the NVMEs. And then obviously I have to uncomment this. We can leave the comments if you want to, um, but they will be ignored by uh, the OC command. So this is fine. Now let's head over to the local block YAML and we do the very same thing. So this time, because we want the NVMEs, we're just going to remove SDA and SDB. And uncomment the disks. Fine. Let's have a last look at our files. So the local volume with the volume mode file system has the SDB disks, and they're mentioned by ID. And uh, local volume where the volume mode block has the device pass for the NVMEs and for all three nodes. Very good. So let's apply this. So what this should do is we should now uh, eventually see the ES. So now we see the local PV is slowly appearing. So the 10 gigabyte capacity PVs are used, um, are based on the VMD case and the 1.5 terabyte PVs are based on our local NVMEs. And as you can see that the 10 gigabytes uh, PVs are using the local file storage class and uh, NVMe devices are using the local block storage class, just as we want it. And we're going to use these storage classes um, now to deploy OCS on top of these devices. So this is going to look like this is going to look like this. So we are going to apply an OCS storage cluster and uh, we're going to tell OCS to use the local file storage class with the volume mode file system for the monitors. 
and we're going to tell OCS to use the local block storage class with the volume mode block uh, for the data pods. So the pods with the uh, Ceph OZs on, and uh, we want three of them. Um, obviously, these devices are not portable. So we tell OCS to not try to move parts between nodes. So let's uh, first look at the parts in the OpenShift storage namespace. They're all running, this all looks fine. And now we apply this file. And what we're going to see is that this will spawn parts and create PVCs that match those NVMEs. Now that all pods are in state running, um, the OCS deployment is done. And let's look at this again outside of watch. We have um, quite a bunch of uh, pods deployed now, and we have the OSDs. And we see down here that the OSDs are now also using the NVMEs. We see that with the capacity, we can uh, match that PV back to our local disk. And um, they're using their local block storage class. And for the monitors, we're using the local file storage class um, that gives us 10 gigs VMDKs that are directly attached to the VMs. And um, obviously, OCS is deployed now, and we do have access to the OCS storage classes here and also the Nuba OBC storage class for OBCs. And um, just like always, we can now go back to the web UI and to the dashboard and you see that everything still looks healthy. We can go to the new OCS dashboard here and um, it behaves just like an OCS deployed with the thin storage class on VMware. And we have um, the very same um, look here. Um, this is probably just unhealthy right now because it's rebuilding your data resiliency, which just apply, but will normalize in a bit. And this concludes the demo about local storage on VMware. Thanks for watching.